What's up, YouTube? Uh, it's been a while since I've posted a video. It's been a while since I've given an update. Uh, but back out in the garage today. Uh, about to get the bottom end of the small block for Ron Jeremy assembled today. Um, I've been in the garage here and there, but honestly, since Christmas, I've been sick. Family's been sick. I'm sick again right now, actually. My garage is, what is it, like 25 degrees? I don't know, 80 degrees in here for you Americans. 20 degrees, 25 degrees for my Canadians and Celsius. Uh, and I'm wearing a, a shirt and a sweater. Like, I'm just not, still not feeling well. But, uh, you know, it's middle end of February here, and this thing is still a bare block. Uh, so, I want to get it done. Uh, I want to get the short block assembled today. Um, and just to give you guys a quick synopsis of what the final uh, details of the build for the for the for this small block is for the wagon. Um, so I was on the fence. I was thinking about doing a um, a different piston to get the compression up. But you know, this being a budget build. Uh, I found out that the cylinders were indeed bored 30 over. It already had a stock style replacement piston in it. So, in the name of budget, I've had combos before that ran well with uh, lower compression. So I figured, you know what, we'll do it again, see how it goes. So, yeah, stock style replacement piston 30 over. So this is a 365, roughly, cubic inch engine. Uh, I cleaned up the pistons, I cleaned the rings, I, I, I checked all the ring gaps, I gapped all the rings, uh, or the top and bottoms anyways, to about 26 thou. Um, just because in the future for this engine I would like possibly some sort of power adder, whether it's a little bit of nitrous, maybe uh, a mild blower, I've been kind of on the lookout for a torque storm blower kit. Um, haven't been looking too hard though, but you know, try to keep my eyes open. That would be fun, you know, 8 PSI, fun little street motor. So that's going to be uh, stock crank, stock rods that all cleaned up well, all in good shape. Uh, I did measure the clearances on the, um, on the mains, on the main journals for the crank. Uh, I have not yet done that for the rod, so that's going to happen today. Um, in the past, I've used mics and stuff like that, but on this build here, I uh, just for the purpose of time and because it's low budget and it's really going to be mostly a street engine, I've just been using plastic gauge. So this crank was turned, uh, not by me, but by whoever had it apart last time. Uh, it's been turned um, 10 thou on the rods and mains. So it's got the bearings to accommodate that. Um, and when I measured them with the plastic gauge, it was like just under two thousandths of uh, bearing clearance on each one. They were nearly identical. I would have liked to see closer to two and a half personally. Um, but looking back at the specs for one of the low budget stock bottom end builds I've done before that was in my scamp, uh, that engine there had clearances right at two thou. And I beat the hell out of that thing. I shifted it between 62 to 6500. Lots of abuse on the street. Never heard it, never heard a bearing, never heard anything. So I figured I should be okay, as long as the engine warms up before I beat on it. Rod clearances, we'll find out today. Uh, but that's gonna be the bottom end. Uh, I'm reusing, you know, a lot of the stock parts. You know, the oil pen that came off of it's going back on. Um, heads and can. So, that was a big, uh, big decision for me. I was looking around locally on marketplace had a hard time finding any set of iron heads um, with a bigger valve in them uh, because the heads that actually came off this engine were 318 heads and when I ran the numbers because I, I, I actually couldn't believe it at first when I uh, when I measured the intake valve I got 1.78 now this is new to me. I had no idea that Chrysler even made an intake valve that size. I thought 188 was the smallest intake, uh, but apparently it's what it was 177 or 178 is the smallest. It was on some select 318s, I believe. Maybe it was on all of them. 
But uh, needless to say, first of all, that might be why this thing was such a dog of a motor, because it could barely breathe. I mean, that's a small intake valve for performance, even in a 360 cubic inch uh, sized engine. Uh, the other thing is I didn't want to spend the money on getting bigger valves into those heads. So I sold them for 300 bucks with the shaft rockers. Um, and right around Black Friday, I ended up picking up or ordering, I still don't have them yet, I gotta pick them up, uh, a set of 65cc assembled Speedmaster aluminum heads. Now I know there's mixed reviews on those heads. Um, I bought them assembled because assembled, they are a pretty good deal. Um, you know, I know the hardware on them is pretty good. Uh, when I do get them in my hands, which will hopefully be later this week, uh, I'm picking them up on the other side of the border, I'd like to try and take them apart, make sure the guides are okay, just make sure the valves are okay. Um, I know there are a couple of other guys who run those heads. Uh, you might be familiar with another Mopar channel. Uh, it's pretty cool, 318 will run. And I spoke with him, and I know he's got a set of those heads out of the box. I believe on his duster and uh, you know with those valve springs from Speedmaster I ordered the ones that were set up for um, a hydraulic flat tappet. Their listed spring pressures seem a little high even for a solid um, but we'll see a little bit more valve spring I don't mind a little bit more so I might if I can see if I can get the springs tested just to see what they're like but nonetheless uh, he's running them on one of his engines, and he's had no issues, and he's been running it for a couple of years. So, uh, hopefully I have the same kind of luck. The only reason I went with those heads was because I think I paid, like, assemble for the pair was like eight or nine hundred dollars. And, you know, I got three hundred dollars from what I sold on the old heads. And you can't find a set of Mopar heads here that don't need work for under under 500 bucks. It's kind of hard. Um, you know, it also takes some weight off the nose. It is a wagon. It's a bit of a heavy car, so a little bit of weight savings I'm okay with. So that's the cylinder head situation. Uh, camshaft. So the cam is also waiting to be picked up. Oh, and before I get to the cam, yeah, I ordered Speedmaster rockers as well. Similar to the PRW stainless ones. Again, I've heard good things, except for the fact that the rockers might contact the retainer on the cylinder heads for the valve spring, the valve spring retainer. So, uh, there is a gentleman who I've just learned of recently, I believe it's called B3R Racing, his name is Mike. He makes different geometry kits for Mopar shaft rockers, I've already spoken with him. Most likely I'm going to have to get one of those. Um, so once the heads are here and on, I take a couple of measurements for him and he makes a kit that improves geometry, gives you clearance and whatnot. So that's the cylinder head setup. I think like all in all that head setup, because the rockers I bought as well on Black Friday, let's call it like 1100 bucks, right? For a pair of heads and rockers, um, kind of hard to beat. And you know, I think flow wise, anything's better than stock iron in stock form, obviously stock iron heads uh, but I didn't want to do that I don't have the time for it as much as I would love to do it um, so anyways that's the, the top end set up the heads uh, camshaft so it was a um, the cam that came out of here was an old crane hydraulic flat tappet so I spoke with Ken at Oregon cam grinders uh, if you're a Mopar guy you might have heard of them if you're not a Mopar guy you might have heard of them but they're pretty popular in the Mopar community they do a lot of regrinds, so I spoke with him. Uh, we talked about a, you know what the plans for the car are, and um, he gave me a couple of different grinds that he thought would be suitable for what I'm doing. I really said I really wanted to uh, turn it into a solid flat tap, and so he said we'd be able to do that. We'd be able to tighten up the uh, lobe separation a little bit because uh, it was pretty wide. I think stock on that can. It was like 112. Um, so I don't have the specs in front of me. Uh, I'll post them up in the video with the grind number as well. Uh, and maybe, you know, in future videos, once the engine's running, I can let you guys know how I like it. But it should give the car a little bit of an idle. I know 
tons of guys care about that, but I wanted something that was going to pull strong to about 6,600. Uh, still allow the use of uh, the power brakes, possibly. I don't mind if I have to switch to manual, but one less thing I'd have to do right now. Uh, and he said it will have, you know, a mild idle to it. So I'm okay with that. Um, and I think that was only like 130 bucks. And then lifters, um, new lifters I'm also getting from him. I can't remember what the total was there, but I think, you know, for Cam and lifters, it was like 230 bucks out the door. So you can't go wrong there. Uh, I got to reuse the Cam that I had, which I know is an old crane grind. So I think the hardness should be there. It's an older camshaft, can't get it anymore. I think it was like from the 80s. Um, and these are just all hopes and speculation that I have, right? I'm telling myself it'll be a harder harder met, uh, metal in the can and it should be better. So hopefully, hopefully. Uh, what else? Uh, I picked up a Holly um, Strip Dominator, single plane intake. Uh, just by chance came across one on a local classifieds, a uh, guy I bought it from, great guy. Anyways, part of why I wanted it, I wanted a single plane. I know some people would say, why would you want a single plane on a street engine? Um, I just think in a performance build, a single plane is where it's at. I know you give up a little bit of bottom end, but you know, with converter and gear, you really shouldn't notice it too much. Um, I initially had purchased an air gap knockoff manifold. I had no idea that the ports were like actually super different than a real Edelbrock. Like they, in testing, have left like 30 to 40 horsepower on the table. So I sent that back. I bought this Strip Dominator. The other reason I went with the Strip Dominator, you might be wondering why such an old school manifold, because you can't buy them anymore. Um, it has the provisions to mount the air conditioning compressor. Because Ron Jeremy is a factory AC car. I would like to keep it air conditioning for now because again, it's a street car, taking the family around in it, and uh, it will be nice to have working air conditioning on hot summer days when we are on a long drive. Uh, so that's really the parts breakdown of stuff that I had to get. I had to order a few gaskets. Uh, and maybe in a later video, I'll give you guys a tally of what this engine is costing me in total. Um, but off the top of my head, uh, I don't think I'm going to even have $2,500 into this engine. I think it's actually going to be less than that. Um, it's going to have thin head gaskets. Uh, some of you Mopar guys are probably familiar with them. The old uh, Mopar made them at one time. Mr. Gasket still makes them. I believe like they're a crushed thickness of either 24 or 28 thou. Uh, but doing the calculations with, you know, the depth of the pistons below the deck, um, dish CC, head CC, so long as they're accurate, they're supposed to be 65 CC chambers, those speed masters, uh, compressed gasket thickness, it's going to be right around 8.5 to 1, which is low, but it will allow me to run junk gas, and it's going to be better than what it came with, because this was probably like 7.8 compression in stock form with those stock heads and stock gaskets or the Felpro gaskets that were on it. Um, so again, nothing crazy going on here, um, but I have built a motor similar to this. I think I've mentioned it in previous videos. Uh, I had a four speed attached to that motor with four tens uh, in the rear end in the scamp and you know, with a stick and it wasn't even hooking the best. I ran 1230s all day long with that combo. It was a lot of fun. I drove it everywhere. I didn't worry about not having good gas at a gas station. Um, you know, 1230s in a 3,400 pound car. The wagon is a good bit heavier, but you know, if this type of engine can even get me to a high 12, it's probably going to be realistically a low 13 because the wagon is low on rear gear ratio, but that might change in the future. But if I can do a low 13, high 12, I think I mentioned that in a past video. I'd be happy with it. You know, more than enough fun for uh, a street car. I mean, for now. But yeah, those are the build details. Uh, so, I am going to get back 
adhere to what I said I would do. Everything's been cleaned, by the way. Everything like that. This is actually ready for assembly. The last time I was out in the garage, I was actually getting sick when I was out here. But uh, I cleaned all the cylinders. I cleaned the lifter bores. Like everything is clean. The decks are clean. It's ready for assembly. It's nice and warm in here. The parts are warm because I've been letting it get warm in here for a few hours now. Um, I've never done a sped up time lapse video, but I'm going to try and figure it out for this next section and just do a quick time lapse, like a speed uh, sped up thing of me assembling the bottom end. But I got all the tools already, and uh, yeah. Hopefully by the end of this Saturday, it's around noon right now, hopefully within a few hours, I have this, uh, this bottom end assembled and the next step will be going to pick up the rest of the parts, getting the cam in, getting the heads on. <coughs> like I said, I'm sick. <laughs> Once the can is in and degreed, and I check piston to valve. I've got a push rod length checking tool from previous builds. I can order or I can measure and check for push rod length. I can take those cylinder head measurements to send to Mike at B3 for the rocker geometry correction kit. And then that's really, I have the rest of the parts for this build. I don't need to order anything else. It'll just be final assembly. So, enough talking. Thanks for watching, trying to bring you guys up to speed here. Like I said, I know it's been a while. And uh, here we go. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. set of rods here, rods and pistons, number seven, number cylinder number seven, cylinder number eight. So I'm going to show you guys what my procedure has been for every single cylinder, every single rod and piston combination. So far the Plasti gauge has shown on every single connecting rod uh, bearing uh, about one and a half thousandths of clearance little on the tight side for me but again this is a street engine 
I actually have a service manual for a 1971, and uh, I believe it says for one valve clearance. So it's a little looser than factory spec, but anyways, it is what it is. Low budget street engine. Like I said earlier, won't be beating on it until it's warmed up to temp. So let's get these last ones in.